Hey everybody, Blender Beetle here and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about the differences between the three levels and why you might choose one over the other. I'm not going to get into all the differences because there are quite a few of them, but I'm going to get into some of the main ones and why you might say choose a raster over a tunes raster level or other reasons. So we're going to start with the raster. The raster level is my personal favorite. If you notice over here I've made three levels, the raster, a tunes raster, and a tunes vector. The raster level, the main thing that I've, the main thing that uh, prompts me to want to use this one other than say a tunes raster is because the the lines on here are not tied to their col to the color that I use to make them. So if I change this color, the line stays black. And my new line turns red, but say I want to change the color again, the line stays that way. So if I say one to do, in the past I've done a uh, completely shaded apple drawing. Um, I can do that with a tunes raster because I can use my RGB color picker over here to change the to change this style to it doesn't seem to want to do it when there's nothing on the page so if I say took this and made some stuff for me to click on and then I changed my color to red I can use my RGB color picker to find that color and change it to that color another difference that you'll find with the uh, raster level is the ability to change the opacity of your brush. I personally absolutely love this ability because it means I can get different brush width types. Like I have a bunch of presets that I use that are similar. Well, they're not exactly like their uh, real life counterparts. I've got a 4H or a 4H which is a really light brush because I can turn the opacity down to almost nothing. And I've got my 2B over here, which is much darker, but still somewhat lighter than my 8B over here, which is completely, completely opaque. That's something that you cannot do with the Toons Raster. Opacity is only for the raster for the same reason that it's not tied to your, uh, your style over here. So in the Toons Raster, let's, let's go ahead and move over to Toons Raster now. In the Toons Raster, all of your lines are tied to the style that you use in here. So if I tr come over here and I make a line here, but then I want to go to colors and I change it, my line changes with the color. So this is especially important when you're, say, uh, coloring something in and you want to make an adjustment to your uh, baseline colors like you change the character design a bit it's super easy to go and change it to say you wanted a blue shirt instead of a red one that's one reason you might use raster level another thing you have here is your opacity control in the raster level you do you change your opacity in the sorry in the tunes raster level you change your opacity in the style editor as opposed to changing it up in the brush settings you have similar settings up here except as you'll notice you have no opa opacity ability. You do have the ability to turn off pressure pressure pr sensitivity which you also have in the tunes raster. Um think that's about it for the differences between tunes raster and raster. Like I said, it's tied to your styles. If you want to make a line that's going to be a different color than this one, you have to make a whole new style. Tunes vector is the one with the most differences, you can make a line. Oops, sorry, I'm on my other layer. So you make a line. It is, at, like the Toons Raster, it's tied to your styles. And unlike the Toons Raster, though, what you're working with here is points. You're working with lines that have been chopped up into little sections, so they are super editable. If I, say, wanted to turn this into a circle, it would take some time, but I could potentially turn this line into a semi-perfect circle, or as perfect as I'm going to get with my uh, <laughs> inability to judge how a perfect circle would look. You also have an um, array of tools down here, like the uh, 
iron tool which evens out your lines. You have the magnet tool which changes your lines. And it's just the vector layer is very versatile. You can also go ahead and connect these which makes it a lot easier if you want to fill things. So often if I'm using the vector layer it's for cleanup because um, when I'm doing cleanup I want to be able to move or change the line just a little bit if say I messed up and the character has a rounder body as opposed to say uh, kind of a say I did this shape but I really want this shape I can kind of take my editor over here after I, I tend to use the iron first because it reduces the amount of things I'm working with and I can kind of play with it until I have the shape that I want and that's why you might use the vector tool um, between Toons Raster and Toons Vector there the main difference is the the uh, using points as opposed to the Toons Raster which is just raster lines. You can't use any of these tools on a Toons Raster level. Um, you also, when you select in a Toons Raster, it's selecting a section of it, whereas when you select in a Toons Vector, you're selecting a line. So that could get somewhat confusing if you're working with a lot of lines. You want to try and work with as few separate lines as you can in the Toons Vector layer, and that's going to make it much easier to edit. So, um... Similarities, they all use levels, they all use styles, although, like I said before, the raster level is not, in the end, tied to your level palette, and you can change things willy-nilly and it won't affect anything. In the raster and the vector layers, when you go, you're probably going to want to use the style picker, as opposed to using the, uh, actually that's being weird. Well, the style picker as opposed to the RGB picker. The RGB picker you cannot use on Toons Raster, but you can use it on Toons Vector. And it seems at least... And basically it's... The RGB is going to pick a color on the screen, whereas the raster... Oh, I guess you can use it in Toons Raster. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize for the hiccup there. You can use these pickers in all of them, I believe. The, sty the style picker picks a style that's already in your palette. The RGB picker picks a color on the screen to change your style to. So just keep that in mind. That is why when I'm in the raster layer, it really doesn't make sense to use the style picker in the raster layer. Because, well, one, your, your stuff isn't tied to a styles. So choosing a, a style picker is going to choose a color, yes, but it can get confusing, especially if, if you have some colors that don't exist anymore. So in the raster layer, I always use the RGB picker over here as opposed to this one. So I think that's about it for the differences that I'm going to cover in this video. I hope this was helpful um, for those. I know there's been some people who have confusion over whether which layer to use and level to use and why they use that type so this is my two cents on that if you guys have any questions feel free to put them in the comments if you have anything to add any differences that you notice that you find particularly worth mentioning let me know I'd be I'm really curious to hear what you have to say um, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening if you like this video give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment and subscribe